1.7 million t veterans in Texas, and that doesn't include reservists and guardsmen and active duty personnel. So 12% of the population that are eligible to vote, they are a veteran. So that's a one in eight chance that you're going to be talking to a veteran. So you always want, and Tammy has some little marketing badges that say, if you're a veteran, I want to shake your hand. Um, so you could get, get those and, and uh, wear those. In fact, I might have a couple in my briefcase. I'll give them to you. Yes, women veterans are very important. Um, Leslie and Frank, can you guys be married for just a minute? I know you're... <laughs> we like each other, but... We won't tell your wife, Frank. <laughs> There should be an envelope here. What, what happens in the conference room? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> 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 it's the next level. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm a Cracker Jack real estate professional, and I'm going around saying I'm a preferred realtor with the Veterans Land Board, and uh, I'm asking people. I'm just asking that question. So, what I don't want to do is go, Frank, are you a veteran? Because Leslie it probably feels like a veteran, even if she's not a veteran, because she's married to Frank. So, <laughs> so I mean, because, you know, single mom, Frank's gone all the time. Uh, so we always want to be politically correct. Are either of you veterans? Because there's a good chance nowadays, unlike when I was a kid, when women had to get out of the military if they got pregnant, we have more and more women. So 14% of the armed forces are women. So just be very careful about that. Since 2002, we've had 155,000 women that have served in Af Afghanistan and Iraq. So we're very proud of our women veterans. So you make a very good point. Uh, now, a lot of veterans are not from Texas but they you know, kind of come here as fast as they can. Uh, they qualify for the Texas Vet. So to make it less complicated, I just want you to remember where your little girl flyer is because that'll tell you the VLB phone number, the toll-free number, their website, the basic benefits of what they qualify for. But the, the history, the background, is it's a state program and in 1946, the Veterans Land Board was created by the Texas legislature, which means somebody had to write a bill and get it co-sponsored and voted on in the both bodies of the legislature and approved, and they agreed that there should be special low-interest loans for veterans to buy a piece of the rock. Um, so they put the Veterans Land Board, which is a very small agency, um, probably maybe 100 people that work there, um, under the Texas General Land Office, which has about 600 people. So Veterans Land Board is part of the Texas General Land Office. Not every uh, state has a land office. And so in 1949, they made their first land loan to World War II veterans coming back to European and Asian theaters. In 1983, a state senator out of San Antonio, uh, then state senator Frank Tejeda, who later went to Congress, he uh, wrote and got the uh, home loan program, which is what we're most interested in, home loan program. And it was $20,000 when I first started with the Veterans Land Board. And you had to do it in conjunction with another loan program. But nowadays, the loan limit's gone up to 417, so you just do one loan at, a, at the lower interest rate. In 1986, they created the Home Improvement Program and then the state veterans' uh, homes, which are nursing facilities and in the state cemetery. So the ones you're most concerned about are going to be the housing, uh, home, and, and uh, land. So the VLB offers low interest home loans, home improvement loans, and land loans. The home improvement and the land are direct loans through the Veterans Land Board. You can't call uh, Michelle and ask her to do a home improvement loan for you. Um, you can call me and I can tell you how it works. You can even have your veterans call me. I had a veteran that was, um, I noticed 202 area code from Washington. And he calls on, on a, one of the holiday. And I answer the phone because I figured, you know, if it's a realtor, uh, you guys need help right away. You're not calling me because you want to, you know, talk to me, you know, just for the heck of it. So the guy says, you know, I want to buy land in Rogers Ranch. I want to buy a lot. Uh, my realtor so-and-so told me to call you and I, oh yeah I know her she's great um, so I said well you know I, we don't do land loans but let me tell you how it works C would you like me to send you the land application I just happen to have that online so you can have them call me but just understand that we do not do the land loans and one of the questions he asked me it turned out he was a general that was getting ready to retire out of the Pentagon and what he wanted to know is could he, could he buy this lot at Rogers Ranch 
and then build on it later on, and would that affect his VA entitlement? And the answer is no. That, that had nothing, the land loan has nothing to do with, with, with no, that's a state really? program. So now the housing program, you have to contact a lender that does home loans, that's jumped through the hoops of the, the Veterans Land Board to be uh, approved. And so you can't go to the VLB and get a house, home, home loan. You have to go through a, a participating lender. The home improvement land are done directly through the Veterans Land Board. So that's why I'm saying keep your little girl. Mm -hmm. don't, don't lose your little girl. I have a question. Do you know what the loan value is on the land loan? 95%. No way. 95%. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. LTV. Yeah, and then we're going to go over the land loan uh, in great detail. But see, for your purposes, Leslie, what you want to know is, okay, here's my little girl. I can borrow up to 100000 on the land. Um, home improvement is, uh, excuse me, housing is 417 Home improvement is 25 k So you don't have to remember anything. This will be emailed to you, and you, you'll have this. Um, this is the VLB's marketing flyer that they use. And they also, if you want to call... The 800 number 252 vets, 800 252 vets. You can say Tamara said, but they know me as Tammy. Tammy Tatman said that I could have some brochures, and they have like these three-part fold, folded brochures. I think they're like 44 cents a piece to manufacture, and they'll give you like 25 at a time, and you put your card on that. And this is part of my package to you. Did you know about this? You don't have that. You've always got your little girl flyer. So you don't have to remember all this stuff. It's right there for you. That's why I like that flyer. So the v, VLB wants everybody to know we're not the VA. Um, state agency, separate and apart from your VA benefits. I got called a VA lady all the time when I was with the VLB. But state. And the reason it's confusing is, you know, out of 50 states, where there's only five that have special benefits for their veterans. And that might be some little statistic you can throw out there. Uh, California, Alaska, Oregon, Wisconsin, and Texas. And we're the only one that has a land purchase program. So they don't understand, and you want to be the one that tells them, hey, you're special. If you give the veteran a flyer, did you know you qualify for special low interest loans through the Veterans Land Board? But I'm not from Texas. But you live here now. Do you have 90 days active duty? Oh, I've got 20 years. You qualify. I mean, even if they don't use it, you are still the one that told them they're special, and we want to reach as many people as we can. So only one with the land program. I like this slide because this is kind of, uh, you, I had to just figure this out from a manual when I first started at a bank. I was at a bank originating Texas vet loans. No training, so I, I, I like this because you don't have to worry about it. Veterans can use each loan program more than once. And it's changed throughout the years. So it used to be you could only have one land loan. Now you can have as many as you want, only one at a time. You can have two VA loans at the same time, right? But with the Texas VET, you can only have one of each type. So in other words, if you have a Texas VET housing loan, then you can't have another Texas VET housing loan until you pay off that housing loan. So you can have a land loan, put a house on it, then maybe do a garage with the home improvement program, um, all at the same time. And the properties do have to be located in the state of Texas and they are subject to credit approval. So um, the Veterans Land Board is, this is probably one of the most important bullet points, is that cannot be used for refi purposes. So you can't leave this meeting and tell someone that they, who has a high interest land loan, that they could refi through the Texas Fed. And my own father, who's a Vietnam veteran, shot down over North Vietnam, is like, but what good is it to be a vet Vietnam veteran if I can't refinance my house, you know? And I'm like, like thinking that I could, and one time he told the land commissioner, my daughter could be land commissioner. You know, <laughs> I'm like, shut up, you're gonna fire. But, you know, I mean, I'm, God love him for thinking I'm smart or whatever, but I mean, you know, people want to use it for refi, but they can't. And so you, and here's the real reason that upsets me that we've got to reach these people before they get a loan because no refi under the law, the laws that govern the bonds, that are the you know tax exempt bonds that are issued to fund these loans, not allowed to refi. And um, we are having this class that we were talking about it before, the Heroes Welcome Home, that Tim Brown, Remax, I love Remax, and then Tim Brown 
from San Antonio and his wife Nancy are, are on the board to the, the committee to have this Heroes Welcome Home MCE. And what it is, only there's only one other city that's done this in the United States, Chicago. It is a seven hour MCE and the whole point is how do we deal with someone in a wheelchair? How do we deal with someone that burns all their body? What about someone who has post-traumatic stress disorder? Uh, you know, we the agents want to know. So 175 agents, thanks to Tim, because he organized this fabulous MCE, they're sitting in this San Antonio Board of Realtors. They, one of the most important things about the class was they brought these veterans on the podium, had them talk about their experiences to make the agents think, well, what's it like, you know, well, the sacrifice. So this young little couple came on the, on the uh, stage and he was in a wheelchair. He'd lost both of his legs. His little wife was with him. She was in the 10% category that stayed with the husband, 90% divorce rate, in their 20s, their babies. And they get up there and they start telling the story. And this young man says the first house that the, the uh, real estate agent took him to see was a house with a driveway with an incline. That's not a smart thing to do for a guy in a wheelchair. That wasn't a good move. So, okay, note to agents, don't do that. The second house that this uh, agent took the young man and his wife to see was a two-story house. Leaves the young man who, let's face it, he almost died. In the first floor, takes the little wife upstairs and hits on the wife. Now, I don't know one agent, I've never met an agent that I think would do that, but the point I'm trying to make, if you talk to Bobby Ehring, who's got burns all over his body, we would have to have 61 degrees wherever he's at because of his, his burns. And I, we were talking about that, and I said, remember that guy that he said, you know, hit on that kid's wife? Oh, that happens all the time. Mm -hmm. So... As a mother, I'm thinking, oh my God, and everybody was so upset about this. After the meeting, I went up to the young lady and I, oh, I wanted to know, because I thought, well, if we all have relationships with loan officers, realtors do. If the realtor is that big of an idiot, what, you know, what did the loan officer, and sure enough, that kid, they told me they were paying 6%, which was, I'm like, that kid should have had like 3% through the Texas Fed. But what can I not do? I can't refi under the Texas Fed. Tax exempt bonds, fund to buy tax exempt bonds, lower interest rate. So the, the loan officer uh, can refi it through the VA program, but not through Texas Fed. Now eligibility, I, I don't, you know, don't really like this slide because I just want you to think that everybody can qualify because for the most part they can. Uh, Everybody you talk to, for the most part, 99.9% .9 of the veterans you talk to have the 90 days active duty that's required through the VLB. Now the VA is different. The VA is the basically 181 days during wartime and two years uh, during peacetime, and then you know you don't even worry about that. But because we've been at war, almost everyone qualifies. But some people might not qualify for the VA, but they qualify for Texas Vet because they have 90 days total. So if we have someone who's used up their entitlement maybe because of a divorce or something of that nature, we can underwrite their loan under a conventional or FHA uh, using the Texas Vet. Um, so they can't have been dishonorably discharged, um, but they just have to have 90 days and they have to be a resident of Texas at the time of application. So the only ones that don't qualify are your veterans that are coming from California that want to use the California address. No can do. I mean, they can use a Homewood. As soon as they put their foot on Texas soil and claim that they are a Texas resident, then they qualify. Well, so that was my question. There's no seasoning on that, is there? There's no seasoning. They, there's no time frame. There used to be. In the 90s, there used to be a one-year requirement if you weren't from Texas, if you're home of record, is not Texas. Like Frank's son, his son's home of record is Texas. So he qualifies immediately. He probably knows he qualifies. Mm -hmm. But the individuals that are not from Texas, they really don't understand that they qualify. Um, back in the 90s, there was a one-year requirement, and I was in my favorite grocery store again, H-E-B, and I'm talking to this guy, and there's some tax-exempt bond funding for uh, 
for Vietnam veterans at the time, and it was 3.64. Well, the market in the 90s was like 6%, and I got excited about that, you know, because I like to, when the veterans find out, they get really happy. So anyway, I'm telling this guy uh, all about that he's a Texas vet, and he goes, uh, time out, I've got a, my wife's waiting for me, I really don't have time to talk to you. And besides all that, I'm from New Jersey, and I'm not even a Texas vet, I'm from New Jersey. And I said, well, I knew he had, He'd already told, I said, well, how long have you lived here? It's 10 years. So he had that one year, uh, the former requirement. So I said, well, your interest rate would be 3.64, and you are a Texas vet whether you want to be one or not. <laughs> so he, and then he kind of perked up, and he went from wanting to call store security to, yeah. Yeah. you know, oh, let me have your card. Yeah. You know, who wouldn't, he was building a new house. Who wouldn't want a lower interest rate? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I'm a little bit. I probably need to get a life, you know, but it's, to me, it's, to me, it's fun to help these people because so many other people just want to kind of squeeze a dime out of them. So Texas resident with the intent to remain in Texas, the unmarried surviving spouse, the young lady we were talking about, she got a Texas vet, 2.62%, uh, no funding fee. And then there's something called the Army of Republic of Vietnam. This is Ar Arvins. And these are South Vietnamese that served through 1961 through 1976 alongside our uh, United States military. And there is a large population of Vietnamese in this area. So they don't qualify for the VA, but they do qualify for FHA and conventional. Uh, they don't qualify for the land loan. So if you have one of those, um, let me know and I'll help you with that. Uh, Mm -hmm. Question in regards to um, being in Texas and intending to stay in Texas. Would they have to have like a Texas driver's license? No. Back in the day, they had to prove it. What we're getting from the veteran, it's a very timely question that you're asking because here's, here's the slide with the answer. Okay. And so you have what they sign, if, they're, if their home of record's not Texas on their discharge, they just sign this affidavit of Texas residence. And so the loan officers have to have this notarized, okay? Or the veteran has to have it notarized. And then you are going to scan these forms and, along with the military documentation. If it's active duty, then we have to have a um, statement of service. Um, but normally, it would be a discharge, and we scan this stuff, scan these forms, and send it to the veteran's land board. Um, so there's no waiting period. They just have to sign that form saying, this is where I live, Homewood Suites. I've been there for 15 minutes. Okay, so if it, yeah, that's what I was going to say. My dad's a vet, and he's in Chicago. He owns a home free and clear there, but if he wanted to come down here and use his, yeah, he could stay with me and buy a home here. Absolutely, he yeah. absolutely, yeah. That's an excellent uh, scenario because okay. that kind of drives it home. Daddy comes here; he's living in your house, waiting to buy a house. Exactly. He qualifies. Yeah. Okay. You know, but he has to sign this statement saying, you know, this is my address. Right. I intend to stay here. This right. is my home. But the fact that he owns another home is fine in another state. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the DD-214, um, member four copy, as we talked about before, because that shows the character of service. That's just what it looks like. Um, then we have the eligibility forms. We actually scan them instead of faxing them. And the VLB turns them around in 24 to 48 hours. Have you had good luck getting your certificates, your notices of eligibility? Mm -hmm. A lot of times they'll get them back within the um, next you know, couple of hours. Used to be they wanted to wait. They wanted the veteran, the VLB wanted the veteran to wait until they had a contract to get this letter of eligibility. Nowadays, they want you to go ahead because of the volume the interest rate is so good, they want you to go ahead and, and order that or get that. Now, as a loan officer, former, uh, you know, when I was a loan officer, I always wanted to get this letter of eligibility myself. Number one, I want to over deliver to my client. I want my agents to like me. And I want to know, number one, that the notice of eligibility, that I have it. Because if you, if the veteran messes it up and they do it wrong, then it's in, you know, could be in limbo. So I'm going to fill the loan officer's going to get the letter of eligibility, which they have to have in order to lock the loan. It has a one-year shelf life. Now, the limit on the Texas Vet housing program has gone up uh, to $417,000. So unlike the VA home loan, you know, VA, we can make a loan over four seventeen. dollars They just have to put a down payment. On the Texas Vet, it's four seventeen. dollars 
They don't, Texas Vet allots so much money for each veteran and it's 417. In fact, veteran does have to sign a document that says they're going to occupy as their pri primary resident for a period of three years. Now, the VA doesn't have a period of time that they tell the veteran they have to live in the house. Um, but the Texas, just so you know, as the realtor, you'll say, oh, yeah, I went over, they told us that in the class, They're, that you have to sign that um, intent to occupy the property for a period of three years. But if the veteran gets stationed somewhere else, or if you you know something happens and you need to move, the v, the Texas vet is going to give you a waiver. They'll give them a waiver. I've never heard of a veteran not getting a waiver, but they just want them to know you need to live here as your primary resident. Eligible property types are pretty much anything you can think about. Um, two to four family units. There's a quirk in their system, then those have to be five years old. So if it's a duplex or a fourplex, there's a little part of the 1986 Tax Reform Act that says that the tax-exempt bond funding can only cannot be used for anything that's less than five years old. I don't really understand it, but so you probably won't have very many of those. Um, manufactured homes, modular homes. We do modular homes. We do not do manufactured homes. Um, I believe Wells Fargo does them. Um, they must be done in conjunction with FHA, VA, or conventional financing. So the the the, the Veterans Land Board is required to um, underwrite the, the housing loan under FHA, VA, or conventional financing. So 90% of them are VA loans. 3% of them are FHA, and then conventional is 7%. So I think this is Lake Conroe. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's what I was laughing about, hmm. your condo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my condo project, yeah. yeah. yeah there you go. Check it out. Texas. <laughs> I don't know where she got this, and I just think that's hilarious. The more I see it, huh? Said it's in Flanders. I think I saw that in Montgomery. <laughs> <laughs> so some condos won't qualify. All right. So conventional, if they go conventional Texas vet, then they have to put 5% down. We simply underwrite, Leslie, I think you asked that question. We simply underwrite the loan under conventional FHA or VA. And nothing makes me matter to hear a veteran tell me, well, the lender says I cannot qualify for the Texas Fed. I can qualify for the VA, but I can't qualify for the Texas Fed. And it makes me mad because 90% of the Texas Fed lo housing loans are guaranteed by the VA. They're also VA. So the legislature said, okay, you can do these loans, but they have to be guaranteed, insured by HUD, guaranteed by the VA, or they're going to have to put 20% down or do an 80-10-10 on a conventional uh, where the Veterans Land Board will lend them up to 80% of the value on an 80-10-10. We make a second lien for 10%. The veteran puts 10% down, which means they don't have to put, pay for PMI, pay their own taxes and insurance if they want. Um, but that's only 7% is conventionals. So like someone who doesn't have any VA entitlement or someone who's putting a lot of money down. So what's the difference between a VA loan and a VA loan with Texas Vet financing? Interest rate. That's all. Just interest rate. So it, most of the time, the veteran, if they have a 30% or greater service-connected disability, that's when the low interest rate is, is so good with the Texas Vet because they get that half a percent off their interest rate. Texas, uh, every, I think it's like every five years, there'll be, um, on, you'll be voting for, uh, voting to approve bonds sure. to issue, and they're tax exempt bonds issued by the state of Texas. And so instead of reinventing the wheel like CalVet in California, CalVet used to have to go to the state of California and get a loan. And it was not a very efficient system. So they started doing what we're doing, which is sign up lenders that already know how to, to process and originate VA. I mean, think about what it takes to be. I've got a friend who started working for a bank, and she wants to do VA loans. Her specialty is VA. And she's working for cameras on, can't see it. But she's working for a, a bank. And I, I, I'm, I ask her, do they have a VA underwriter? Do you have a VA processor? Do they know how to get the guarantee? What are you going to do? How are you going to do a VA loan unless you broker it out? And there's not that many companies. So the, the loan, the money comes from, eventually comes from the Veterans Land Board agency. But here's how it works. We do a loan. We close it in our name. 
and we, and we fund it. Then we package the loan up and we send it to City Mortgage, who is the program administrator for the VLB. City Mortgage looks at it, says, okay, we're going to buy it, and they wire us money for, I think they do it every two weeks, in bundles of the loans that we send them. Then the VLB is going to give them the money. So that's, we get our money back, but the VLB, City Mortgage is using VLB's funds. So would that be considered a conventional FHA or VA? It, 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 90% of the Texas VET loans are VA because that's the best thing for the veteran because if it's underwritten under VA guidelines, then they don't have to put a down payment up to 417 if they have full entitlement. But let's say the veteran lost his entitlement or her entitlement in, in a divorce or they had a foreclosure, they just didn't have enough entitlement, then what we would want to do is say, look, we've got an option for We want to be different than the other lenders that are going to be saying, well, too bad, you've got to go conventional. We would say, okay, but you could go conventional with Texas VET. You have to put 5% down, but we could get that lower interest rate. What if your veteran had a service-connected disability, but the spouse, ex-spouse, has uh, the house and they didn't refinance it so your veteran didn't have enough entitlement. So we would do, uh, fund it with a lower interest rate with a half a percent discount through the Texas VET, underwrite it under conventional guidelines. I think it's your question, the money all comes from the same place. The only real difference is what you're underwriting it to. So these are guidelines. Are Correct. We using conventional Not money. Yes. Okay, Correct. That is the issue. Yeah. That's it. The money's all the same. The money's the same. They just underwrite it to different guidelines, and different programs have different guidelines and different amount down. And, and that kind but of I'm thing. glad you're asking that question, Frank, because uh, I teach this class all the time, and you know, it that's a big point that you need to understand that this is not the Texas vet coming up with their own guidelines, and that's why I'm saying I get angry if the lender says, "Well, you qualify for VA, but you don't qualify for, te for Texas vet." It doesn't make sense because they only have to have 90 days. It's not. There's no underwriting guidelines for Texas Vet Housing Program. And, um, and so somebody that would qualify, I'm just going to say this, for an FHA loan outside of the Vet Program, then they have a PMI. If they qualify for those so same guidelines inside the Vet Program, they have no PMI, correct? Right. And that could be a $250 a month sure. savings. That's why 90% of the Texas Vet portfolio are VA loans, mm -hmm. because that's the best deal for our veteran. And that's the thing that doesn't get through to the veterans because most of our home buyers want to hear what? Yes. yes. Want to hear yes. And they, do, they are depending on us to give them the best deal. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Now, the lender, because the VLB is only, the VLB is setting the interest rate. So there's no room to premium pot. You know, when I teach home buyers class, I always tell the, the, the home buyers, the more out-of-pocket expenses you have, the lower the interest rate, okay? You gotta pay for that low interest rate. The less out-of-pocket, the more room that the lender has to pay some money towards your closing cost. So since there's no premium pricing on the VLB housing program, they, the VLB, allow the lender to charge an origination and a participation fee, okay? So what your loan officer, what Michelle does on her is she's going to give them an estimate. Here's what your out-of-pocket expenses would be with a VA loan. Here's what your payment would be. So this is what you would pay over the life of the loan. Then here's what your, uh, your out-of-pocket expenses would be with Texas FET, which you're going to be higher by at least one point. So this is how long, and this is what your total payments would be, though. Oh, see, you saved $70,000 by going Texas Fed. That's what we're talking about. I mean, if sometimes I try to beat these guys to that kind of stuff. I'll say, well, hey, well, you know, I'm, at, I'm in my office. Let me go in the payment calculator. I'll tell you how much interest you'd save because it's fun to do that. Nobody else wants to take the time to do that. But anyway, so then we um, look at the Texas Vet with the VA financing. Is it worth that extra point? Maybe, maybe not, depending on the person's situation. The longer they want to live in the house, the more they want to pay that point. So, uh, you know, if it takes them two years to recoup that point, you know, they're live there if they want to live there a long time. Hey, that let them make the decision. Just give them the choices. So that's the difference in the Texas Vet. 
Now, also, you know, I'm sure you work with new uh, builders all the time and people that are buying new houses. If they qualify for the Texas VET and they want to buy a brand new house to be built, in other words, they enter the contract with the builder before the house is completed, the VLB requires that the house be Energy Star inspected or that they have a HERS rating of 75 or less. And I know you guys probably already know about Energy Star. Back when this pr class was created, people didn't really know everything about Energy Star. So they have some information in here that, you know, but you know that it's a higher HVAC system, a higher performing windows, um, you know, a tighter envelope in the home. So it's a higher performing house. I looked at a house with a 2,400 square foot house that had a 40, per 40 rating on a HERS, and it was like $80 a month. But that's way above and beyond. But veterans care about this kind of thing, and you can use it to your benefit um, in selling the home, um, obviously. But the, the VLB has a, some kind of a, an agreement or partnership with the EPA. So they were requiring Energy Star inspections, even if the builder said, hey, all of our homes are Energy Star. They wanted it inspected. Well, that's a four-part process. And one of the parts of the Energy Star inspection is a pre-sheet rock inspection because the, the, um, the insulation can be moved by the electrician. The electrician forgets to put it back. You have a hole in your house, right? So a lot of veterans were finding out about the lower interest rate on the Texas FET after the sheet rock was up. So they couldn't get the Energy Star inspection. So the VLB has now offered uh, HERS ratings. This is what they look like. I'm sure you're familiar with the Energy Star label. I mean, if it was me and this Energy Star label's on the circuit breaker box, I'm going, pointing to the label going like Vanna White. This house is the Energy Star house. Did you know that statistically Energy Star houses are on the market fewer number of days uh, and sell for more money? You know, those two. And you can be, you can go to energystar.gov and be an Energy Star partner as a real estate professional and have that on your card as well. Um, now, exemptions. So what they're offering is a HERS rating of 75 or less to the option of the Energy Star four-part inspection. On the HERS rating, they still check the envelope of the house. They do a blower door test and so on and so forth. But it's less invasive. They don't do the pre-sheetrock. So HERS, I think everybody's going to go to a HERS rating. You know, so for your, it's cheaper than an Energy Star. You know, you want to give your customer the choice whether they want to get the, in, you know, me personally, I kind of want to check the, ins I want to have an Energy Star inspection and have them check the insulation. But most people are going to the HERS ratings. Now, if you need a rater, loan officers, I know how busy you are. You can email me. I'm going to call, I'm going to go to energystar.gov and I'm going to call those raters. So the raters that I get email you, they're going to be people I've already talked to because it's a government website. Guess what? A lot of people are disconnected. I don't think that's not what I want to happen to your agent. So, yeah. Just let me know. Yeah. Okay. So the interest rates change every Friday at 530. Um, the interest rate obviously is going to be determined at the, the time that the rate is locked. If it's new construction, we don't lock until the house is pretty much complete. Very tempting, but you know we issue 45-day locks, which is a very good lock on the Texas Fed. So the base rate today is 3.79, so it's gone down four basis points. It was 3.83, and so we've got a half a percent off for the veteran who has a 30% or greater service-connected disability. So that's 3.29, which is less than a point below market, right? So this is just fun to to be able to offer that program. Um, and a lot of the bigger companies really don't want to offer it because they just don't want to mess with the niche product, probably. I'm not quite sure. Uh, so you're, at, you're talking to a veteran. Are mm -hmm. you a veteran? Yes, I am. I get made fun of because I'm always asking these de disabled veterans. You know, so what is your percent disability? Oh, I'm 80%. I'm like, today's your lucky day. You're telling these disabled veterans a lucky day, you know, but really they're excited because you tell them, well, today interest rate for you because you have a 30% or greater service-connected disability is 3.29. And you don't have to 
you just have to know 30% or greater. You don't have to tell them that. You're 80%, you get 3.29, you're eligible for that interest rate today. And you don't have to pay a funding fee. So, you know, you're talking to a veteran, are you, yes, I am a veteran. Um, do you have a service-connected disability? No, I don't. Oh, that's too bad. No, you don't want to say that, you know. <laughs> yeah, oh, that would be, you don't have to pay a down payment up to 417 if you've got full entitlement. You know, you have to put a positive spin on it. Then the veteran says, I've got a 20% service-connected disability. You don't have to pay a funding fee. So it's very exciting. It, it is always going to be the best interest rate for our veteran. Of course, we talked about the surviving sp uh, spouse discount of a half a percent off of a veteran who was killed in the line of duty, missing in action, um, or from a service-connected injury. Uh, we'll get that half a percent off. So we want the opportunity to help those unmarried surviving spouses. Um, can, can I tell them about what I discovered last week? Yes. Oh, please. I, um, I got a referral for a gentleman um, who is moving here and wants to buy, well, he's already here, wants to buy, and what I did was I compared the VA landlord rate, and then I went to just a regular con conventional rate and took um, the 1% as if he was going to pay a discount, you know, to buy down the rent, because you, you have the 1% participation fee. So the rate last week uh, for the VA landlord was 3.83, and even with buying down on the conventional, it was still 4.125. So the difference every month was $67.94. Um, and the, the reason why this guy wanted conventional instead of VA is because um, he wanted to put a large down payment so that he could pay his own taxes and insurance. So in that instance, the VA loan wouldn't have worked. Because they always have require have an escrow. And he also, um, you know, didn't want to pay the, um, the VA funding fee. But I thought, you know, it was neat for me to see um, there was such a big difference. Yes. You know what I mean? 